Greetings everyone. I hope you all are doing good. Today we are going to install Coolify in an EC2 instance in AWS. So if you self-host Coolify, you are going to get a superpower uh, because everything you are going to do is completely free of cost and you are not going to have any limitation other than the server cost itself. All right. So this is Coolify. You see that even even though they provide the cloud support, self-hosted users are much more in number than their cloud users. All right. So if I simply go to the official documentation of how they recommend us to install Coolify in our self-host, then you are going to get this uh, documentation. And you see uh, the server requirement is very simple. Uh, we need a server with SSH access and this can be a VPS, I mean virtual private server, a dedicated server, a virtual machine, Raspberry Pi or any other SSH access. But as AWS is very popular and I'm very comfortable with it, so I'm going to use AWS. Uh, but they are also providing a £20 credit, most probably if I'm not mistaken in Hensner, uh, you can also choose that. And the supported operating system is uh, Debian based like Debian or Ubuntu, Red Hat based, Arch Linux, Alpine Linux, etc. But I'm going to go with Ubuntu because that's the more common and popular and we are used to uh, right now. And the supported architecture is AMD64 or ARM. And this is the main interesting part, the minimum hardware requirement. According to the recommendation, we have to ensure that we have at least two cores of CPU and 2 GB of RAM and the storage is minimum 30 GB of free space but uh, if we are going to have a lot of content, a lot of projects then we might need to increase the CPU, memory and storage as well. But we are going to think about that later. Uh, let's simply install one now. And about the installation methods, they are currently providing two different installation methods. One of them is quick installation and the other one is manual installation. So we are gonna go with quick installation because that is also recommended. All right, so before proceeding further, let me simply open my AWS and uh, launch an instance because that's the first thing we are gonna need to do, right? So I'm in my AWS and I'm going to EC2. If you don't find EC2 in your homepage, you can simply search for EC2 like this and then simply uh, click on launch instance so firstly i'm gonna give it a name so let me name it something like Qualify yt because i am installing this for this youtube video only uh, as i already have a Qualify server running in my different server all right so i'm gonna go with ubuntu and as I need to make sure that I have at least two cores and 4 GB RAM so I can't use this pre tier because they are uh, only one CPU core and one GB RAM right so what I can do all right this is fine this is simply the machine image so I'm going with Ubuntu Server 24.04 LTS, the latest one, SSD volume type. Architecture, I'm going to go with 64-bit x86. And then here, instance type. Now, you see that the free tier we get in AWS only provides one virtual CPU and one gigabyte of RAM, which isn't sufficient for our work. So at least I need to go with this T2 medium because here I'm getting two virtual CPU and four gigabyte RAM, the minimum requirement for running Coolify. And keep in mind that this will cost you money because this, uh, this specific instance, I mean, other than this free tier, uh, they are not covered by your free tier uh, method. So this will cost you money. All right, so t2.medium, key pair, I can select existing key pair or I can simply create a new key pair. Uh, let me create a new key pair because I'm comfortable with that and let me name this key pair also, Coolify-YT. And 
I'm gonna keep the key pair type as RSA and private key file format .pem so that I can use it in OpenSSH because I'm more comfortable with OpenSSH than this putty. So create key pair. All right, the key pair has been downloaded. And here, so about the storage, you already saw that the minimum requirement told us to have at least 30 gigabyte of free storage. So yeah, I can keep 30 gigabyte for now, but I know that I'm gonna install a lot of softwares in it. So I need more storage. So I'm going with 50 gigabyte of storage. And yeah, here, I need to make sure that I am allowing SSH from anywhere and I am also allowing HTTPS traffic over the internet and allow HTTP traffic from the internet. HTTP and HTTPS both should be enabled. All right, I guess I am good to go. Okay, I suppose. Yep, and simply click launch instance. That's it. It's going to take a while to launch. Simply give it some time. All right. It has been successfully launched. So I can simply go to my instances and I see two instances mm -hmm. are running. The first one is my uh, company Kulify. And the second one is the one that I have created just now. You see Kulify-YT. This is the one. I'm going to show you how to work. All right. So it's initializing. I can simply reload it to see whether it has started or not. All right. So now I need to ensure some uh, security group also. So for the security group, I need to make sure the security group name. Which one is it? This one, right? Ulify dash yt. And for this, my security group name is launch wizard dash seven okay so i need to go to the security group i'm going to instance i'm in ec2 and from here i need to go to where is the security group here is the security groups so here security groups and mine was launch wizard 7 i have selected it and i created on security group id so these are the inbound rules. I need to edit the inbound rules and I need to create a new rule. So add rule and it will be custom TCP and the port would be 8000 because by default Qualify runs on port 8000. And yeah, uh, I need to make sure that this custom becomes anywhere IPv4. Keep in mind anywhere IPv4. Okay then I can simply save the rules. And now I am going to my instance. It should be running. All right, let me reload it. Let me try to connect to this instance. So connect public IPv4 address. I can copy it or I can use SSH to uh we ssh into my this server so mm. how can i do that there are multiple ways to do so if you are a linux user or mac os user you can simply use mm. your default terminal but if you are in your windows operating system like me uh, because currently i am running windows uh, from this machine so you can either use git bash or you can use your WSL terminal as well. Uh, but I'm not gonna use the SSH right now because I think I'm gonna go with this uh, EC2 instance connect via the web browser. All right. I can simply copy this public IPv4 address because I'm gonna need that and I can simply click connect. So it has opened a new tab for me and it's gonna initialize the connection as well. All right, here I am. Okay, so I need to install Qualify, right? So to install that, I'm gonna go with the quick installation. So here, you see they have told us what to do, configure SSH, blah, 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 uh, set up your firewall. 
yeah you can simply follow the documentation to enable some firewalls all right so i have already enabled 8000 for http reverse proxy is optional if you want you can do that if you need webhook you can also do that all right so i'm gonna go with simply this curl uh, curl command so i can simply paste it here and yeah. please run this script as root so instead of bash i'm gonna simply use sudo bash there you go it's running you need to give it some time to finish all of the installation don't do anything here so you see we are getting a congratulation from them and it has been installed successfully now you see that your public uh, if your public ip is not accessible you can use any following private ips but we are not gonna go with that if you remember correctly we have uh, copied our uh this public ip so we are gonna select this and we are gonna use this with port 8000 that's it voila you see this is our qualify running in our self-hosted aws instance and uh, because this is the first time you have to create your account so i'm gonna give it a name let's say i'm gonna give it name fahim and the uh, email is gonna be uh, let's say an email and password all right the registration process has become successful and i can get start here and see some tips from them but i can also simply skip the onboarding so i'm going with skipping the onboarding so here you go notification all right i don't need it right now so i'm gonna click accept and close disable this pop-up and our qualify has been installed successfully so we don't need to worry about anything at all and if, if we want to create a new project we can simply go to here projects and from here let's say i'm gonna create a new project and let me name it something like all right so let me see whether I can simply deploy a simple static site from here directly. So I'm going to go with this one. Let me simply deploy a static website from a public repository. So I'm simply popping this whole URL and I'm going to name it the website name rainy roof. I'm going to keep the description blank for now and continue. All right. So this is my project. I'm going to simply click here and add new resource and from here you can add public repository you can add private repository but you have to create a github app from here that is very simple if you simply click here uh, they are gonna give you all of the options to choose from and you can simply follow them and uh, complete these settings as well but for now i'm gonna go with public repository but here obviously we have a lot of options you can uh, import using docker file docker compose empty uh, empty file docker image you can host your database server like postgresql mysql redis mariadb kdb dragonfly clickhouse mongodb and they have a lot of services like active pieces actual budget n18 also available here app right supervised is also available here and a lot of stuff a lot of stuff and all of this stuff uh, is very easy to install you simply click any one of them and they are going to provide you all of the onboarding stuff so it's going to be very simple you are going to love it man you are going to simply love it so i'm simply going with a public repository because this repository is currently public in my github repo and i can simply paste the you know url here and click check repository and yeah next pack yeah because this is a static website so maybe i'm gonna go with static all right so click continue and click deploy so the deploy has started yep it started and if you want to check the debug log you can simply click here show debug logs and these are the debug logs you can also make it full screen and click here so that it automatically scrolls down
all right so the deployment is finished and it's running i can simply click link they have assigned us a temporary link i can click here and you see the site has been hosted how cool is that if you want to add custom uh, domain you can obviously do that simply go to the project configuration you can change the name description build pack uh, and engine configuration if you want you can also uh, generate a different uh, temporary domain or you can also add your main domain or subdomain and docker image build directory if you have uh, let's say if you have some environment variables then you can add them here and you can also add the environment variable as the development view persistent storage git source you can change change them if you need if you need to change the deployable branch you can update that you can get a, a specific server access scheduled task to run cron job webhook preview deployment if you want a preview deployment before going to the actual production like Vercel, you can do that you can check the health rollback resource limit you can uh, add some specific limit to your specific project let's say this project shouldn't take more than one cpu or shouldn't take more than 500 megabyte of ram you can obviously do that you can set up your metrics tags and if you want to delete this obviously there will be a danger zone to do that right and uh, for your main qualify uh, settings you can go to these settings and you can change the settings as well as you see fit for yourself so personally what i like to do uh, in terms of our company usage let's say our company is uh, opixillo.com so we go with let's say uh, qualify.opixillo.com so whenever anyone tries to open qualify.opixillo.com they get to this page and uh, if they already have the uh, credentials to log into my Qualify account, they can log in and you can definitely set up your teams. Let's say you have multiple developers in your team. You can add them. You can, uh, yeah, you can definitely add them. You can add member and you can also allow registration from the other users as well. You can give them specific access. You can give them a specific access to a specific projects, a specific a set of projects and so on and so of thing. And you can also get a specific admin view and everything you can also uh, give anyone temporary access by giving their email and the role and invitation link as well so everything can be done here you can also create multiple teams here you see how cool is that it is very cool and my current resource consumption is like this i'm not running anything other than this simple static website as you can see right here so I think you have understood how cool is Qualify. I have simply showed you how to, you know, how to uh, create your new instance and install Qualify and install projects. And definitely, I would recommend you to uh, experiment with this, create a lot of projects, and see how it actually goes. How to scale up if you think that your current system is not handling all of the stuff properly. I mean, you have all of the freedoms, right? You have everything in your hands for free. I mean, not free because you still need to provide the fee for your server. But let's say if you are hosting in your local server, in your personal local machine or in your Raspberry Pi, then you need you don't even need to think about any cost other than your simply electricity bill and the internet bill, right? So that's it for today. Uh, I have showed you a lot of stuff from here because don't worry, I'm going to delete this instance after finishing the recording. Uh, even after that, I tried to make it transparent so that you can understand how to do those kind of stuff and how to tinker around with them. So if it helps you, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. And uh, make sure to follow me in GitHub, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.